This episode is all about charge distribution. So what is a charge distribution? It's just a collection of charges. Collection of charges. So pretty soon we're going to be solving and calculating electric field due to uh, some kind of a charge distribution. Now we have already seen charge distributions before. We saw a charge distribution of two charges, we saw a dipole, we calculated electric field last time due to three charges, all those are charge distributions. But distribution can be classified into two kinds. We can have one kind is called as a discrete distribution. A discrete distribution is where you can identify individual charges. So you could say, okay, for example, there is charge Q1 over here, and there's charge Q2 over there, and there's a charge Q3 here. So we can think of a clusters of charge maybe, or whatever. We can, we can identify those charges over there. And when we have such a discrete charge distribution, if I ask you what is the electric field at any point, point P, if I ask you that, then what you do is you do the superposition principle as we did before. So you're going to calculate electric field to the charge one alone, then you would have electric field to the charge two alone, and so on and so forth, and you just do a summation, right? So you end up with doing, oops, you end up with doing a summation. So then electric field at point P would be K Q1 divided by R1 squared plus K Q2 divided by R2 squared, and we need to take care of vectors, okay? so. I'm, I'm doing a vector summation. All right, so I, uh, my notation is not very accurate. I, ha I may have to put some unit vectors over here, but I don't want to make this thing a little too messy. I'm just going to tell you that electric field in general, so let's put a vector ahead over here, and there will be some unit vectors over here, okay? So I'm not going to put the unit vectors, so some direction there. Right? So it's going to be a vector summation of just k q i divided by r i square and you'll have r i cap or something like that okay and r i cap would be depending upon positive whatever okay you just have, you just do a summation like this and that's what we did so far so this is just a notation to explain in general what's going to happen in a discrete charge distribution okay what if we don't have a discrete charge distribution but we have a second kind of charge distribution which is called as a continuous charge distribution that's the second kind that we can have a continuous charge distribution this is where you cannot identify individual charges. So let's take an example. Suppose we have charges distributed over a line. So let's say there's a charge here like this. It's distributed. It's continuous. Okay. Over this entire length, I could say that there's a charge Q. And this now is a continuous charge distribution because we cannot identify there's a charge A here or charge Q1 here and Q2 here. No, it's a continuum over there. And that's the whole idea behind continuous charge distribution. And we can have three kinds of continuous charge distribution. We can have a line charge distribution, like what we have over here. So this is a line. So let me just call this as a, this is a line distribution. So this is the first kind, maybe. We can also have a second kind of charge distribution, which is a surface. So you can have a surface distribution. So let me just erase this. Okay, we can have a surface charge distribution. And a surface charge distribution is where charges are distributed over a surface. Okay, so it's just in a two-dimensional plane or two-dimensional whatever distribution over a surface. So total charge Q, and we'll have some area A. So this will be some area A. So this is a surface distribution. And then third one, which we can have, is a volume distribution. So charges can be distributed over the entire volume. So we would have, let's say, something like a box. Let's, let's draw a box very quickly over here. So let's put a box like this, some sort of a cubicle box. Okay, and in that box, imagine we have charges. So we could have some negative charges this time. Let's put some negative charges over here in that box. Again, I could say the total charge is a negative Q, and this has a volume V, and this would now be a volume distribution of charge. And the big question is, if you have a continuous charge distribution, whether it's a line, surface, or volume, doesn't matter, whatever it is, the question is, how do you calculate electric field at any point? I could ask you electric field at any random point, point here, or there, or whatever. How are we going to calculate the electric field is the question. And I'm not going to show you that over here. I think it's the, the best example, best way to show that to you would be just working out an example. 
Now, before I work out an example, before I do that, we'll do that in the next, next video. I just want to talk about something called as charge density. It's going to be a very important quantity when we talk about continuous charge distribution. So let me just write that down over here. Over here, we're going to talk about charge density. You guys know what density is. Density is a unit of, it's, it's, sorry, it's, it's a measure of, of crowdedness, right? It's, it's just crowdedness, how crowded something is. So since we're dealing with charge density, we're going to talk about how crowded charges are. So how are we going to calculate charge density? Well, depending upon whether it's line or area or volume distribution, we can calculate charge density either by thinking about how much charge is present per length or how many charges are present per area or how many charges are present per volume. So we can have the first one called as the linear charge distribution, linear charge density, linear charge density. The usual symbol, and we're going to stick to these symbols over the, over the next couple of episodes or something. We're going to use these symbols throughout, okay? Lambda. And lambda would be, in simple terms, dq divided by dl. Well, dq is a very tiny amount of charge, and dl is the, sp is the length along which the charge is distributed. Okay, and this will have a unit of notice coulombs per meter. So this is how we define a linear charge density. Then we can have two surface charge density, surface charge density. And surface charge density is sigma, it's sigma is the unit for that. It's going to be dq divided by dA, where dA is a tiny area over which there's a charge dq. And notice this is going to have now coulomb divided by meter square. And the third one would be the volume charge density. Volume charge density. And we define that as rho, and rho would be dq divided by dv. So now we take a tiny volume dv, and in that charge is dq, then the volume density is coulombs per meter cube, dq by dv, all right? So that is the whole idea behind charge density and continuous charge distribution. So in the next series of episodes, we're going to work out in detail uh, you know, what happens when we talk about continuous charge distribution and stuff like that, all right? So stay tuned for more.